Praise God. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School on this Sunday, the 27th of September. We thank God for this day, and we thank you for joining in for our summary and review of today's lesson. The lesson today is God's plan revealed. Again, today's lesson is God's plan revealed. Hallelujah. This is lesson four in this lesson series that we began starting with the first lesson on September 6th. I give honor to God today. I thank God along with you for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. The multitude of benefits that God bestows on us daily is amazing. Hallelujah. I dare you to write some of them down. Glory to God. I thank God for caring for us on this day. I also thank God for my pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, the pastor of the Unity Church of God in Christ and First Lady Charlene Rogers. I also thank God for Superintendent Deacon Joe Daniels and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, as well as our Sunday school teachers, Sister Rachel Drake, Missionary Rachel Drake, and Deacon Robert Delgado. Thank God for you watching. I also thank God and do not take it lightly for the privilege and the opportunity to review and share today's Sunday school lesson with you. Hallelujah. Our Bible basis are the entire context of today's subject and discussion is found in the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis. The 45th chapter and specific focus two verses one through 15. Our Bible truth on today declares God positions Joseph in Egypt to provide food for his family during famine. Hallelujah. Restating it. God positions Joseph in Egypt to provide food for his family during famine. Hallelujah. And then our memory verse, Genesis 45 and 5. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Again, Genesis 45 and 5. As we review our Sunday school lesson, we will incorporate the memory verse and make sure this is something that we apply to our lives. Hallelujah. I thank God for each lesson weekly that challenges us and gives us aims and goals to apply to our life. Hallelujah. It establishes a new graph, a new higher plane that we can aspire to achieve. A plane, a higher plane that we can aspire. Hallelujah to achieve with the help and power of God. Our lesson aim today, by the end of this lesson, we will evaluate Joseph's response to his past mistreatment by his brothers. Express faith that God is at work in difficult circumstances and react to mistreatment, not with vengeance, but react with creative, react with transforming initiatives. Our lesson aim, again, emphasizes the words evaluate, the word express. Evaluate is to determine, and the word react, excuse me. <laughs> The word evaluate is to determine the significance or set value of something, to assess 
or analyze, to determine or set value to. The word expressed is to convey a thought or feeling in words or by gestures and conduct. And then react, react, I failed to capture it in, in my notes today, hallelujah, but it is your expression or your reaction to something that has taken place. Praise God. It is your reaction. Reaction can be physical by words. It can be demonstrated by body language as well. Again, we can demonstrate and react articulately, verbally. Sometimes not articulately, but we react verbally. Sometimes we react by the way in which our body language demonstrates. Glory to God. Our aim today is to evaluate, to express, and then react. React being to do something. Hallelujah. Our lesson today will make sure that our reaction is centered on the will or in the will of God. It will ensure that our actions are centered on the word of God. Therefore, the way we react is extremely important, but we must first evaluate and then express to ensure that our reaction is positive, not only for ourselves, but to others as well. As I referenced last week, it is imperative. I like the word evaluate. I think that it's necessary that we do that for most scenarios or situations that we encounter. Hallelujah, evaluate to assess, to determine the value of a thing at issue. As I said last week, the pros and cons associated with everything in between. And once we have evaluated, our reaction should be positive. Sometimes the reaction is a confession. Other times it is forgiveness. And then many times it is, hallelujah, a reaction in action. We have to demonstrate, not by our mouth, not a reaction of words, hallelujah, but a reaction of doing, hallelujah, putting our words into action. I've said before, we've heard it's a familiar statement. You can show me better then you can tell me. Hallelujah. We see today, not only does Joseph say it, not only does he tell it, but he backs it up with doing. Hallelujah. Are we backing up what we say with action? Glory to God. That's a question that you can apply to yourself, not to anyone else. The great thing about God's word, the great thing about God in our lives, he is our individual savior. And when his word comes to help us, when his word comes to lift us, it's his word for us, not his word for someone else. These Sunday school lessons are coming, hallelujah, to us for the purpose of reinforcing empowerment, hallelujah, showing us that God is for us and he's more than the world against us, hallelujah. He's using biblical examples that we can identify with. All those, these things happened thousands of years ago. The meaning is appropriate. The meaning is applicable. The meaning will help us today. God's word 
is forever. He changeth not. Hallelujah. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Few words I'd like to review. The word plan. The word plan is a detailed proposal of or for doing something. A plan is a detailed proposal to achieve something. Praise God, you create a plan with the intent of doing something. You create a plan of action to do. The plan is created. Hallelujah. And when you create the plan, you think of everything that can happen in between all the good and all the bad so that when you react, hallelujah, it is a planned reaction. Glory to God. The word reveal means to make previously unknown something that is unknown, previously unknown, or to make secret information known to others, to reveal, to make unknown or secret information known, to make that information available. Hallelujah. We thank God for his plan in our lives. Hallelujah. We thank God for his revealing his plan as we live this life. Hallelujah. But the plan and the revealing of his plan are contingent upon us, our will to accept his plan. Hallelujah. And not only our ability to accept his plan for his our lives, but our ability to allow God to implement his plan for our lives. We have to believe and then give him permission to do so. And that permission is saying, yes, Lord, whatever your plan is for my life, I say, yes, Lord. I say, yes, Lord. I say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Are you saying yes to God's plan for your life today? We use the word empowerment. We've been using it a few months now. I say it helps us. It equips us. It may be redundant, but I want to restate the meaning of the word empowerment. The process of becoming stronger and more confident especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. Hallelujah. As the children of God, as the people of God who are following the rules and the guidelines set in God's plan, the Bible. Hallelujah. We have empowerment. We have the ability Glory to God to make sure that God's plan is implemented easily in our lives by saying yes to his will. Glory to God. But we have to know what his will is. We have to know about him. Thus, it being imperative and important for us to study, to attend Sunday school, to attend weekly Bible study sessions, and to attend every Sunday morning service. Hallelujah. There in those sessions, we learn. We also have to read on our own, study on our own, pray on our own. In those sessions, in those one-offs, we learn the plan of God. And hallelujah, how to say yes to his will for his plan in our lives. Glory to God. The word guilt was referenced last Sunday. Again, this is empowerment. 
We have to understand different words, their meanings, and sometimes how our lives and our current phase of life may associate with those words. The word guilt, the fact of having committed a specified or implied offense or a crime. The word confess, admit or state one has committed a crime or is at fault in some way. And then the word forgive, to grant pardon, to absolve, to give up all claim on account of, cease to feel resentment against. These words were redundant from last week. We res reviewed these words last week, but they're still relevant this week. These words not only be, will be relevant this week, they'll be relevant for the remainder of your life. For this week's lesson, we realize we cannot achieve empowerment. Hallelujah. The ability to control and claim one's rights until at times we, for things done wrong, we have a feeling of guilt. And then we can confess. Hallelujah. And seek forgiveness. There is a formula for empowerment. Sometimes we need to confess. Sometimes others need to confess to us. Sometimes we need to forgive. And then there are times when others need to forgive us. Hallelujah. These are words for empowerment. Apply them to your life on this week. Praise God. Today's lesson takes place in the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis. We know last week we were in the 42nd chapter of the book of Genesis. Last week, the people spoke highly. Excuse me. Last week, we highlighted the events of Joseph, seeing and knowing his brothers. Those words, seeing and knowing, were highlighted in the scriptures. Seeing and knowing them again for the first time in 21 years or in over 21 years. Glory to God. I know that a lot of things transpired as we read about, happening to Joseph in that 21 year time span. Hallelujah. But all those things were necessary to help him be in the position that he is now. Our memory verse refers to God positioning Joseph so that he could help his brothers in time of famine. Glory to God. Many of us are looking at the position of Joseph as governor as it relates to the reference God positioning him. Hallelujah. But the reference God positioning him also meant his heart and what he went through to be in a place after 21 years when he came in contact with his brothers, a position to forgive and a position to help. So God positioned him. Glory to God. In last week's lesson, we learned Joseph the planner. Joseph was strategic. Not only did we learn in the last few weeks that Joseph could interpret dreams, but we also realized that Joseph was strategic in every single thing that he did. So last week he set up the opportunity for he and his brothers to encounter one another a second time. Hallelujah. As I said and referenced last week, I believe during those three days when Joseph's brothers were in prison, Joseph was talking to God and God was talking to Joseph. Hallelujah. Not only was God talking to Joseph, but Joseph was listening. Joseph was willing 
to receive the instruction and direction. Hallelujah. People of God, every successful plan requires consultation with and waiting for direction from God. Hallelujah. Your plan may be great, but until you consult God, until you receive his approval, hallelujah, it may not be successful. Every successful plan is, hallelujah, consulted and conferred with and by God before it is implemented. Praise the Lord. Joseph has shown us this. Hallelujah. In his life and his reactions. In lessons from September 6th through today, September 27th, we have seen the mighty hand of God in both Joseph's family life as well as his professional life. God has dealt with him in a mighty way in both family, hallelujah, taking away the immediate family, giving him a new family of his own, and also helping him out professionally. God, in his plan, does everything well, personal and perfection. But again, we must consult him in everything that we do. Praise God. Joseph provided instructions for his brothers to return. As forestated last week's lesson text was found in the 42nd chapter of Genesis. This week, we're in the 45th chapter of Genesis. You know, I just, we just didn't skip. Praise God. It's important and imperative to read what happens in between so we clearly understand where we are in the context of God's word. Hallelujah. The 43rd chapter of the book of Genesis highlights the fact that Joseph's brothers went home and shared everything that he had given them from a grain perspective and silver perspective. Hallelujah. When they had eaten nearly everything and it was all gone, Jacob and our Israel instructed his sons to go back down and get them some more grain or more food. But Judith noted to his father, we were instructed to bring back our father when we returned. Now, I'm not sure what happened. I can only go by my reading. But I was thinking, you mean to tell me that you had an abundance of food. What did you tell your father when you got home? How did you explain that one of your brothers remained in captivity? Glory to God. When you are guilty, when you are responsible for the act of committing a great or heinous crime, sometimes everything that you do is impacted by that one instance. These brothers tried to cover up everything they did. Glory to God. What they did to Joseph followed them in word and deed. They only told half truths. Glory to God. Let's make sure the actions of our path have not positioned us to tell only half truths. Glory to God. To make us or to place us in a position of wanting. Judah noted to his father that they were instructed to bring back their brother, their youngest brother, when they returned. Judah noted whether we take 
Benjamin or not, the fact remains, Father, that we can't get anything else until we bring him when we go. <laughs> Jacob in turn asked his sons, what have you done to bring this trouble on me? My God, hallelujah. What have you done? Justify your actions. Jacob then provides instructions to his sons on how they were to return, how they should prepare for the return. He provides instructions to take balm, a little balm, it says, and spices and myrrh, even pistachio nuts and almonds, as well as a double portion of the silver, not only bringing additional silver, but the silver that, <coughs> excuse me, Joseph provided to his brothers when they initially came to Egypt in last week's lesson. We know that Joseph sent them away with a lot of grain and actually gave them silver to show his reflection at that time, action speaking louder than words. He had not revealed himself, but the love of God was in his heart even last week, sending his brothers off. So we get here this week in this lesson where Jacob is instructing his sons to go down to Egypt, take gifts and give them to this leader. And we pray that as you bestow and show this leader these gifts, he has mercy on you and not only allows you to leave with Benjamin, but your brother that has been locked up as well. Praise God, a few things has happened there. It appears the brothers divulged every single thing that happened. And at that time, Jacob was able to, Israel was able to come up with a plan of his own to entreat the leader in Israel to hopefully leave or eliminate or mitigate some of the trouble that has come upon him from the actions, or so he assumes, of his sons. Glory to God. So they depart and go to Egypt. When Joseph saw Benjamin with his brothers, <laughs> when he saw the very fact that they returned, he told his steward, first person. Go get them. Bring them to my house. Prepare a meal for them. Hallelujah. <laughs> the brothers were afraid by these actions. In their minds, they did not want to go. They were afraid of what would happen once they got to the house. Hallelujah. They were afraid that Pharaoh was the type of men or man they were. They were afraid that not Pharaoh, but that Joseph would exhibit the same characteristics that they had displayed, that he would be deceitful, hallelujah, that he would get them. They were under the impression that they were going to be dealt with based upon the fact that someone had placed that silver, hallelujah, in their bags when they departed the first time. So now some brothers who had been very familiar with convenient memory lapses over the 20, over 21 year period, finally, suddenly wanted to divulge everything and be as truthful as possible. Glory to God. Last week, 
we learn the word sorry. Sometimes we're sorry because we have been caught. And because we've been caught, we tell everything. Glory to God. But are we regretful? Hallelujah. Are we remorseful? Were these brothers remorseful? Or do you think they were just afraid of what was going to happen? Hallelujah. There was still additional work that Joseph needed to do to make sure his brothers felt comfortable. Praise God. There is work, people of God, that we have to do. Even when people have done us wrong, we have to go out of our way to show them that God has placed a spirit of forgiveness in our heart and he can do the same thing for them. It takes more than us saying it, but we have to prove it. We have to show it. We have to demonstrate it by our action and reactions. Glory to God. As four stated, the brothers were afraid, so they were truthful with the steward. And the steward told them, don't be afraid. Hallelujah. The God of your fathers has given you that silver. Glory to God. We thank God for the 43rd chapter. Stuart allowed them into Joseph's house. He gave them refreshments and food. Not only did he make provisions for them, but also for their donkeys, for <laughs> the transportation. He was seeing about them. Joseph made it home. And when he seen his brothers and saw his baby brother, Benjamin, he began to weep and he left the room. That is in the 43rd chapter. As we see the work of God manifest, his power in the everyday life of Joseph, we see that they ate. Hallelujah. I have to back up a little bit. In that 43rd chapter, toward the end of it, Joseph came home. He had a feast, feast for his brothers and feast for some of his Egyptian friends. During that feast, during that celebration, they all had to eat in separate rooms because it was customary that Egyptians could not eat or dine with Hebrews. It was detestable to Egyptians at that time. So Joseph ate in a separate room. The Egyptian friends of his ate in a separate room as well as his brothers. People of God, we see the mighty hand of God working in the life of Joseph. Can you imagine him being governor of the people? but could not eat in the same room as them? Only a God can make something like that happen. It is not logical, hallelujah, but we serve a God who, hallelujah, takes our logic, hallelujah, and turns it into his wonder. He takes our logic and turns it into his miracle. He takes our logic, hallelujah, and does the supernatural, supernatural. God is a powerful God. God is all-knowing, and God demonstrates himself through and in us when we consult him on our plans. Hallelujah. 
the 44th chapter, <coughs> Joseph instructs his stewards to fill his brother's bags again. Fill them as plentiful as they did the first two times. Excuse me, as they did the first time. For their journey home. Joseph also instructs his stewards to place his silver cup in the bags of his brother Benjamin. Again, this is the 44th chapter. This is again talking about strategic Joseph. This is again talking about Joseph the planner. He instructs his stewards to place that silver cup in Benjamin's bags. And after his brothers depart, not soon thereafter, he instructs his stewards to go after them and get them and ask them why they have repaid good with evil. The brothers deny the charge. Joseph notes, and again, I'm condensing and summarizing, doing so to Hallelujah, ignite interest in you, to ignite the desire in you to read his word on your own. Go and read that 43rd and that 44th chapter of the book of Genesis. Awesome, impactful reading for your learning. Hallelujah. The brothers deny Joseph's accusation. Joseph notes, we will search your bags then since you deny my accusation. And again, I'm paraphrasing. But whosoever beg is found with that cup in it, that individual shall be my slave forever. <laughs> of course, Joseph had a plan. And by way of the plan, the cup is found in Benjamin's bags. When the brothers see that, they are upset, rent their clothes. Then Judah implores and passionately speaks to Joseph and recounts everything that he told him the first time. The fact of who their brother Benjamin was and why he was home. What happened to his older brother Joseph and the fact that he was presumed dead. How their father was impacted by that death and how he cherished Benjamin. But if they were to allow Joseph to keep Benjamin as a slave, it would surely take their father's life. It would surely damage him emotionally and the pain and grief associated with the imprisonment or the possible imprisonment of Benjamin would be too much for their father to stand. Glory to God. We thank God for the background 43rd and 44th chapters because now we come to today's lesson. Part one, a family preserved, Genesis 45, one through eight. A family preserved, preserved means to maintain something in its original or existing state. Joseph, the governor, could no longer constrain himself. As we learned last week, the word confront, Joseph needed to confront the situation. In the 45th chapter, hallelujah, after he receives the impassionate plea from Judah, he instructs everyone to leave the room but his brothers. Hallelujah. He be, then begins to cry and weep aloud. Joseph is crying so loud that everyone in the building can hear him. Everyone in the house, not only in his house, but it also says those in Pharaoh's house could also hear him weeping. Glory to God. 
he had told his brothers who he was. And the first question he asked after I outlining his identity, how is our father, is our father still alive? They were stunned <laughs> at his admission of who he was. They didn't hear the question about the father. They were stunned about this man saying he is Joseph. Can you imagine the look on their faces? Glory to God. The look on their faces, the look of guilt, because they knew what they were responsible for. They knew what their collective actions did. They knew the impact of their collective actions, not only on Joseph, but their father as well. Hallelujah. Has that happened to you? Have you encountered someone that has done you wrong? Glory to God. Have you observed the look on their in faces when you encountered them? On the flip side, have you done someone wrong? Can you recall the look of someone's face when they finally came in contact with you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Face to face confrontation. It must happen. The brothers were astonished because they knew they had sold him to slavery. They may have thought he was dead, but now they were face to face with what wrong they did. Praise God. Joseph sensing, Joseph being a child of God, Joseph talking, conversating, having a relationship with God was able to detect glory. Hallelujah, their feeling of unease. Therefore, he tells them to come near, come closer. The word in Hebrew is nagesh, come close. Hallelujah, come near to me. He even uses the word, I pray you, to his brothers to reassure them that his asking them to come near was not for a sense of vengeance or retaliation. Again, people of God, when people have done us wrong, yes, sometimes it is our responsibility to make them feel comfortable. It is our responsibility to make sure they repent. It is our responsibility to make sure they realize they are not in jeopardy of retaliation. You have no vengeance in mind. God has done something for you, hallelujah, and you forgive them. So yes, there is responsibility on our part, even when someone has done us wrong. Hallelujah. Sometimes we must realize the harm people do. Sometimes people do things that harm others in a tragic way, but be not dismayed. Hallelujah. That action is just like a boomerang. It was applied to their life as well. Being torment for the action that they implemented and or, hallelujah, reactions that have reverberated through their family, through the times in their life since they did such action. At times, guilt is overwhelming. Sometimes people do catastrophic things as a result of their guilt. That's why it is our responsibility as people of God to share the fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. There's nothing that they have done or will do 
hallelujah, that God cannot forgive. So Joseph reassures his brothers. He lets them know we've had two years of famine to date, but we still have five more years where we can neither ear or harvest. The word earing meant plowing. Glory to God. So God sent me before you. Hallelujah. God sent me here to Egypt by way of you to save your life by a great deliverance. Hallelujah. Joseph lets them know it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Hallelujah. But God, he says. And because it was God, hallelujah, that but God made this happen. That but God made me a father to Pharaoh. That but God made me Lord of Pharaoh's house. That but God made me a ruler throughout, hallelujah, the land of Egypt. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But God, God did these things. God allowed this to happen so that he could give us life. Hallelujah. And that more abundantly. How do you confront past hurt, past shame? We should do it spiritually with a forgiving heart. A repentful heart. Glory to God. Are you more grateful for what God done during this time? Are you more grateful for what God did after the hurt, after the shame? Hallelujah. I know I have been in many situations. I know I've hurt and I know I have been hurt, hallelujah, but everything I've been through, when I look back and reflect, I can sit here today and let you know, although I've gone through it right now on September 27th, God has positioned me better, hallelujah, than when the offense happened. I'm better off now before the offense occurred. I thank God for being a God during, hallelujah, conflict. I thank God for being that but God scenario. Hallelujah. Many situations, many scenarios present themselves, but that same God that worked on behalf of Joseph will be Work on your behalf. Just put your name, hallelujah, where we said Joseph. He's the God of William. He's the God of Angie. He's the God of Mother Kid. Glory to God. He's the God of Mother Flowers. Hallelujah. He's the same God. Shared leadership was also demonstrated by Pharaoh. God allowed Joseph to be in a position of authority, and it was not a threat to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was not threatened by Joseph because Joseph had a godly character. Joseph was truthful, and Joseph was being used by his mighty God. Hallelujah. Leaders don't feel threatened. Leaders have no problem using you when they see God being first in your life. Let's make sure we're displaying the correct qualities so God can position us in places of influence. Today's part, lesson part two, a family reunited, Genesis 45, 9 through 15. Glory to God. Reunited. Come together, the meaning of the word reunited. Come together, our cause to come together again after a period of separation, after a period of disunity. 
Joseph in the 9th through 15th verse continues to demonstrate that but God reaction. God makes the difference. Hallelujah. By not only what he does outwardly for us, but Joseph was demonstrating just as prosperous as God had blessed him, hallelujah, with worldly goods and possess position, God had done the same thing inside, hallelujah. He touched his heart. He placed more love there for his brothers in spite of what they did, hallelujah. God bless us, us inwardly and outwardly when we go through trials, when we go through tribulations. Joseph told his brothers, make haste, go get my father and tell him your son Joseph said, <coughs> God has done great things for me. Come down to Egypt. Do not tarry, don't wait. Ye shall live in the land of Goshen to dwell there near me, not only you, but your children and your children's children and every single thing that you have, bring it. Joseph makes a commitment. He'll nourish them, he says, to ensure you nor your household, hallelujah, encounter poverty during the famine. Joseph makes these pledges and commitments to his brothers to demonstrate, hallelujah, there is no vengeance for their actions. He contributed everything they did to the power and plan of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He even states, just in case you are scared, Skeptical, you're still skeptical. You see it's me, you know it's me. Look at my brother Benjamin, look at his eyes. The same eyes you see in him, you see in me. Don't be afraid, I love you. Hallelujah, God had done great things for Joseph. Hallelujah, he lets them know that God's blessings extended way beyond their act or their offense. Hallelujah. His blessings and blood covered the sin and harm the brothers created and intended for his life. God took their evil and turned it to good. Has God done such an awesome thing for you? Glory to God. He's letting the brothers know I'm no longer angry, but I want to demonstrate my love for you. Love in action, even when you've been done wrong, or even when you're, you've done wrong, or when someone has done wrong to you. Again, continuing on part two. Genesis 45, verses 9 through 15. Hallelujah. Joseph instructs him to tell his father everything and get him here quickly. I'm paraphrasing. Joseph had not seen his brother Benjamin since he had been about one years old after he gave his brother's instructions to go get their father and what to say to the father. He gave them all these instructions to help, hopefully, bolster or boost, hallelujah, the willingness of Israel and Jacob to come on down and see his son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life just as he did his father's. Hallelujah. Just as he did for Joseph. God had a plan for Jacob's life by changing his name to Israel. But God was going to use his most cherished son, his most cherished possession, Israel, son Joseph, to fulfill that promise 
to make way for that promise. After he saw Benjamin, excuse me, after he gave the instructions, he saw his brother and grabbed him by the neck and hugged him and cried, expressed his love. But not only did he do that to Benjamin, he also did the same thing with all of his brothers. He cried and he expressed his love and they talked during that time. They talked because they were all on level ground. They were all on the same foundation by the acts of Joseph forgiving, by the acts of Joseph confessing who he was. He did not bring up the fact that his brother sold him off to slavery to reinforce what they'd done, but he stated it as a fact to confirm his identity. Again, God has a plan for your life. Things may seem dysfunctional at times, but we know Philippians 4 and 11 tells us that in whatever state we find ourselves in, we must be content. We also know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them, the scripture says, who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. That to them qualifies us. That to them talked about Jacob and his sons. Today, we are Joseph's in this present world. God directs and has a plan for our life but he also provides assurances. Glory to God. Joseph was placed into a pit by his brothers and then sold into slavery and then placed into prison. It seems like one thing that happened positioned him to accept and go through the next thing that happened. When one thing happens, people of God, it leads us and prepares us and positions us for what is next. We must go through, hallelujah. If we don't go through, then how are we able to see what God has in store for us next? Hallelujah. What is next for you. The life's need for today's lesson. Sometimes one is overwhelmed by traffic event, tragic events in his or her life. What keeps hope alive after the struggle ends? Joseph tells his brothers that what they meant as harm was God's plan for saving them as a remnant of God's people. Hallelujah. God's plan is bigger than the present. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end, and he holds the contents, hallelujah, of everything in between. He's God, and he has all power to change anything in between any time he gets ready to. We just have to say yes. We just have to say yes because the God we know will prove himself. And hallelujah, in every scenario, in every situation, he will prove himself by the word, but God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for today's lesson. Praying. How gracious you are, our wonderful Lord. Thank you for taking us through every valley and guiding us over every mountain. We recognize your plan in our lives and we appreciate you, Lord. Hallelujah, yell el roha, the God who sees the future. We trust you, we love you. Help us to take the mantle of Joseph and dedicate our time and resources to helping brothers 
and sisters all over those in Africa, those in America. Bless America. Bless Africa. Bless Israel. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, people of God. Please tune in at 11 a.m. This is going to be the first virtual men's conference for the Unity Church of God in Christ. They have an awesome program planned for you at 11 a.m. Also, people of God, please remember to give. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of the screen. Enjoy your Sunday. Be blessed. Hallelujah. And may today's Sunday school lesson change your life forever.